specific selection or to ha select a sele specific selection, such as by color. So for example, a lot of times you might be editing photos of a model or someone in front of a solid white backdrop. This is so common and you wanna remove that white backdrop. What you can do is go up to select color range and now what you can do is actually it turns the mouse into this little eyedropper and you want to click on the color you want to select so see how i clicked on this white background and it in here you can kind of see the preview of what's selected if i drag this around you can kind of see that if i select another area it makes a different selection if i select our hair it's something completely different. You can also add to this selection by clicking this plus button. So I can click over here, click up here to get that, that highlight up here, make sure it's all selected. You can do a preview over a black mat, white mat, quick mask just to see what it looks like in your actual window. Now you will see though that her eye is selected because her eye, the whites of her eye are white as well. So what you would do is click okay. So what this now has selected is the background white. And what you would do is drag this into the layer mask option and then press the delete key. And that's going to actually remove the background but what you would want to then do is go with your brush and make sure you're brushing on. Let's actually get rid of that selection. And if we add a backdrop, whoops, we want to add that solid color, make that cool magenta pink. And you would probably want to go in here and brush on using the layer mask, white brush, brush on over her face because you can kind of see that um, there were little spots where that kind of came through. Now, this isn't the best way to do this. I just wanted to show you that there are other ways of making selections. Maybe there are instances where you just want to select a specific color. If it's more of like a graphic or an image where the colors are more specific, uh, you might want to do that for subjects, uh, people. This isn't really what you want to do. You can also go up here and click focus area. But for subjects like people, that's not necessarily the tool you want to use. I just wanted to show you that as a quick op option to select a specific color. Cheers. Do you want to easily make objects in your photos disappear like this? With a couple clicks, you can do the same. So there's lots of ways to remove objects. The clone stamp tool is one that we'll cover uh, in another lesson. And that's, that's one semi-precise way to do so, but it's more of a manual time intensive one. There is a new or relatively new content aware fill option where basically what we're doing is making a selection and then Photoshop is magically doing the rest and replacing what our selection is with uh, a new background or basically making it disappear. So to do this, you have to make a selection. Now, we know that now that there's lots of different ways to make a selection. You have your marquee tools. We also have our lasso here. So if you haven't used the lasso, you can click the lasso and then just drag, click and drag around your object. So say we're trying to get rid of this guy right here. We're just gonna click and drag. You wanna make sure you're not touching the edges of your object. And once you complete your sort of shape, you see these marching ants. That's what these little black and white lines, you can call them. The next thing you do, once you have a selection, is go up to the edit menu and choose content aware fill. This will bring up a new window. You can see a preview of what's already happening. And there's lots of adjustments you can make, but basically what's happening is on the left, you see this green highlighted area. This is your sampling area. This is what you're telling Photoshop. This is the area I want you to sample from and replace what's inside my selection. So if for some reason the sampling area is, is selecting something like, see how it's selecting these bushes or trees in the background down here? And we know like, we don't want Photoshop to use that selection at all to create this 
this uh, this content aware fill, then let's erase that. So we already have this brush with the plus and minus that uh, is on the minus automatically. So we can brush off of this. Say there's something that you do want it to sample from that's not selected. Just hit, click over to the plus sign and add that. You also have your lasso tool so you can adjust uh, your selection and of course your move and your zoom tool. Over the on the right hand side you have your preview area uh, and here you have a couple different options for uh, well one your sampling area overlay. This is just how this green overlay looks. You can adjust the color and opacity. You also have the sampling area options. So for example it automatically created that sample area. You could choose a rectangle or custom shape if you want to um, just do it completely custom. But as we saw earlier, the the auto worked pretty good except for this bottom of, of it, which we erased. Then you have your fill settings. You have different options for um, that will kind of make this a little bit more precise depending on what you're trying to remove. Color ad adaptation and rotation adaptation. You can adjust these to high or very high just to see um, if it helps. For example, if you're if you see something, if you do this and it doesn't look that great, adjust these. Try the scale, try the mirror, just to see what works for you because every picture is going to be different. Lastly, we have the output settings. I like to work in a non-destructive way, so I like having it output to a new layer that we can work with. You could also output it to a, the current layer, so it just kind of saves over the existing layer, and that becomes one layer, or create a duplicate layer, and that's a second layer, but it's still sort of attached to the original image and you can't just edit that specific part which you might not need to do but I'll show you now if I click OK see how it creates this new background copy layer Boop. and if I turn off the background you can see that it's just this little layer right here so that's pretty nice to work with so this was a very easy one though, and that's because the background was really clean. The object was cleanly over the background. So let's try to make it a little bit harder. So in the project three folder, you'll find this photo. And I just wanted to choose this one because it is a little bit more difficult. Let's just say we wanna remove these water towers from this hill. Like I said, you can use any of these selection tools. One of them that you might want to try is the object selection tool where you literally go in, similar to the lasso tool, you click and drag around the object, but then Photoshop is going to intelligently select the object that it thinks you're, you want to select. So we can go in here and see that it's selected the water towers. Now it's selected part of the hill down here and we can actually go in and adjust those things. And you'll want to do that because I want to show you if we go ahead and go straight to the content aware fill option. If you zoom in here, you can kind of see this sort of like ghosting thing where the edges aren't really uh, it, it, the there you see the edges of your object. And you can adjust these settings and it can help. But what you'll want to do first, though, is actually go back to the select and mask option. I'm actually going to uh, get rid of this part of the selection down here. Let's make our brush a little bit bigger because I don't want that. And over here is fine, too. But then also I'm shifting my edge up 100%. And the reason I'm doing that is because that will help with the, the edges of the content aware fill um, being seen or not. So if we go back uh, and we selected OK for that selection and now we go back to our content aware fill, you'll see that it does a better job. You don't see the edges as much. Now you might want to play around with this. You might want to go in and make a more precise adjustment. And sometimes that object selection tool isn't the best one. Maybe just using the lasso tool would be better. But here we can set our color adaptation to very high and it starts to do an even better option, uh, a better um, job. And let's zoom out. I know we're selecting some of this, uh, this buildings down here, which I don't want. 
So I'm going to definitely get rid of the buildings because we don't want Photoshop to be using those buildings as part of the selection or the replacement. And then we're going to add some of the other trees and hills over here. Just giving Photoshop more information to work with will generally make this look better. And as I do that, you can probably see here on the right hand side, the preview looking better and better. Now, of course, this isn't going to be perfect for everything. And I would probably go in here and make a better selection of these towers for the next time. But for a quick edit, for something, you know, you're posting social media, this does a decent job. If I'm printing this out or something like that, um, I'd probably be pr a little bit more picky. But then you could also do things like go in and adjust, uh, do use the clone stamp tool later on to fix some of the adjustments. So say we go in here now and we see, okay, some of the edges look a little wonky. I did mention that we will go over the clone stamp tool in a future lesson, but basically what this does is it allows you to set your selection and then use it kind of as a paintbrush. So we option click over what we want to use as like our, our fill basically. So I'm option clicking this hill right here. Now, if I take it over here to this area of the photo, and I actually want to do this. Now, this is where we get tricky. We want to make the selection. Um, we're actually going to make a new layer with both of these. We're just going to select both of these, turn them into a new layer, and merge them really quickly. So now, we can actually make our selection with the clone stamp tool. Because before... I was trying to make a selection of somewhere over here, but obviously for this layer right here, background copy, there's nothing there. So with this layer selected, background copy three now, we can make our selection over here. And then you can see as I hover over here on the left-hand side where our towers were, I can click and sort of paint on. So again, we have this like very skinny tower thing right here that would have been hard for the uh, the content aware fill um, tool or option to remove. So here's where selecting our option with our stamp tool and then painting over is a better option. Over here, you can see there's a couple things that we might want to get rid of. I'm just option clicking to select my selection and then unclicking option and then just clicking and dragging and painting. So that does a pretty good job at, at fixing some of those little issues if you might have them after the fact. All right, so this is a quick and easy, but also a pretty thorough way of removing objects from your photos in Photoshop. I hope this helps and we'll see you in another lesson. It's time for another project. So here is project two, abstract art. You have the project file. It's this project number two, abstract art. Yeah, you, I would suggest using just the non-final version, but you can always open up the final one just to see how I did it myself. You can kind of get a preview teaser of what this looks like over on the right hand side, but basically making some selections using layer masks and also using the ellipse tool, which we briefly touched on the shape tool in a previous lesson to create this cool abstract art. So in the next lesson, I'm going to be showing you exactly how I get there using these three layers right here. All right, get to work and have some fun. All right, how do we get from this to this? Really, it's just a step-by-step -step process. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make this paint texture a lot bigger to fill the whole screen and put it in the background, okay? And I'm gonna turn off this bokeh texture. Bokeh is that uh, blurry background. It's a Japanese term for how lights appear back here, the bokeh. Um, so we're going to turn that off. And what we're first going to do is make a selection for our floating man. So let's go in here. I actually liked using that object selection tool with the lasso that I showed you in before. And we're just going to click and drag around our dude 
and I can't see down there, but hopefully that was a good selection. Photoshop knows what we're doing. And yeah, it does a pretty good job. I'm going to go into our select and mask. You can see that it, it uh, selected in between the legs. So we're gonna go in there. We're gonna just delete that. Whoops, I was, I was a little lazy. So let's zoom in there, really get our brush pretty small and there we go that's it's pretty smaller there we go if you touch the edge of something it can it can have whoops it can have the opposite effect of what you want let's kick the plus button there we go and get that sock in there I, I keep using the uh, the Z tool to get to the zoom, but you can't use that when you're in this mode. So this is looking pretty good. Let's make sure that we have our, uh, our smart radius is on, so that's good. Let's go in here and clean up his hair. So if we take our edge brush tool, our refined edge brush tool, and we just go over the edge like this. It's gonna do a pretty good job refining that hair. It looks like his shirt there was not selected. So we're gonna use our regular selection tool, quick selection tool to color over there. Okay, his hands, this is another area where the um, edge selection might be a good tool to just brush over there like so. Yep, that looks pretty good. Let's go over to his other hand. There we go, pretty good. Let's go back to our selection, make sure that his palm right here is selected. It's tough because you're kind of doing opposite things. You're telling Photoshop, you know, I want this part of the image, but not this part. And Photoshop doesn't really know uh, consciously that this is a hand. It just knows that there are specific colors and exposures that you're looking to get. So let's go here, use our edge brush, make sure we paint over our shoelace there, maybe right here in the middle. Let's make sure this pant leg is selected. A little too much, undo that. Get a sock. Now, hedge selection, selection. So it's kind of this back and forth, back and forth selection, and making sure it looks pretty good. Oh, part of his pants got there. Oops, a little bit too much. I hope you're enjoying these tutorials and especially these projects. I know, as uh, when I was learning Photoshop and when I le learn any app. I like to watch uh, tutorials like this, full length tutorials. Let's go in here and make sure his hair is selected. Great. Sometimes when you're using the edge selection or edge brush, it removes things that you don't want to be removed. All right. So now we have our selection. Let's go in and we're just going to ch turn this into a layer mask and click OK. So now we have our dude right here floating in space. We're going to make him a little bit bigger though floating in the middle of our image. All right, the next thing we're going to do is play with this bouquet texture. What I wanna do is increase the size of this so that the edges overlap the edges of our canvas. Then what I'm actually going to do is drop this into a layer mask and kind of erase parts of it. So with our brush, I'm going to make it super big, make sure it's the hardness is at zero, and then just with the black brush, so press X or these, make sure your brush is on black right there with our selection over there. You can brush on like so. And if you got too much, if you erase too much, I can switch to white, select on X, brush off, that kind of thing. So getting kind of a texture like that. And I want to duplicate this layer. So I'm just gonna drag it down and actually rotate it. So there's different ways you can rotate. Woo, let's undo that. There's different ways you can rotate. Let's zoom out. One way is just with your move tool 
and then hovering over the edge, we saw this, you can actually rotate and I'm holding the shift key to lock it to the sort of every 15 degrees. Another way to do sort of a rotation or to flip it is to go up to edit, transform, and you can either do rotation or if you scroll down, I, it's hard for you to, I know you can't see it on here, but down below there's an option for flip vertical. And what it does is it flips completely vertical. It mirrors the image. So what you would actually have to do then is go transform, flip horizontal as well. Um, but either way, uh, you can kind of get the same result. But I just wanted to show you under the edit transform tools, you can, uh, get these ob options here as well. So I'm just gonna rotate 90 degrees up here and I'm gonna put this one behind his head. So he's kind of floating in space uh, in between these different bouquet layers. I'm also going to erase a little bit more of this one on top just so it's not a complete sort of match of what's on the bottom. Now pressing command zero to full match this to the screen size. I think the bouquet texture is a little bit too opaque. I'm gonna drop the opacity to 75 for both of these. I think that's pretty good. Now I also think we need to add a couple just abstract ellipses. So if we take our ellipse tool down here, if you don't see it, it's pro it probably looks like a rectangle tool, just click and hover over this and go down to ellipse. And before we do anything, it might be best to choose our settings. You can also change these after. But first off, I'm going to turn off my stroke. So again, I know we haven't dived into the shape layers, but you have a fill, which is the inside of a shape, and the stroke, which is the edge. By clicking on the color block next to the that text, you can actually choose colors or you can make it turn it basically off. And that's what this white box with the slash through it is. So that's just not going to appear. And then for our fill, what I wanna do is select some colors from our image to make the these ellipses, ellipses. So to do that, we can open up our color picker. So click this color picker right here. And now if we're, we can either choose a color over here in our color picker by dragging around this box, we can drag up this slider to get to a completely different hue or color, or to pick a color from our frame or from our canvas, we have this eyedropper that we can just click on the frame and it selects those colors. So I want one ellipse to be this sort of light bluish purple. And so if I click OK, turn off that box, and now if we just click and drag, it's going to create an ellipse, okay? So it created that ellipse, it's a perfect circle because I was holding the shift button down. If you don't hold the shift button, it's going to create more of like an oval. So we can move this around, we can copy and paste it. Whoops, this is a case where I might want to lock this top bouquet texture as well as the floating man so I can select the layers behind it more easily. We can resize it and to change the color of a shape, you can either go back to the shape tool and go up to this fill color up here or you can double click this box next to the ellipse and that's going to open up our color picker. And with our eyedropper, we can make a selection and say you like this, but you want it to be a little bit different. You can go back in our color picker window and adjust the color here. But clicking a color on your in your image is a good place to start. And this is just a good graphic design practice to, uh, and color theory practice to be using uh, colors from your images. It just creates a nice, more cohesive graphic if you're doing that, rather than kind of coming up with completely new colors to use from scratch. So what I'm doing with these ellipses is basically creating like a fake bouquet effect. Now I'm gonna make this this sort of yellow now let's drag this down to yellow so it is more of that yellow and that's looking pretty good. Now our our dude right here, he's not exactly centered. So let's unlock him and 
the reason why I can't just center him to our our canvas with these align tools is because the it's the whole selection of this this photo is going to be centered, not our guy right here. So what we can do though, I haven't dived into this, but this is a good trick, is use what are called rulers. So if we go up to view and turn on rulers, well, you'll see our rulers on the top and left of our graphic. And this, these are pixels. So it goes from zero to 2000, and that's how big our project is. And it's a square, so it's 2000 tall, 2000 wide. Now, if you click in this ruler and then drag to the right, you have these bars that pop up and you can kind of drag them to wherever you want to use as a guide. These aren't actually showing up in your image, they're just guides. And so you'll notice that if you do that and you can move them around, and if you want to get rid of one, just drag it to the edge, it kind of locks it to the center of the frame, which for us is 1000 pixels. And you'll see that if you're doing this yourself, you'll kind of, feel, you won't feel it, but you'll see that when you get to close to the 1000, it kind of locks in frame. And that's good because it helps you adjust exactly where the center of the frame is. So now we can make sure that our subject right here is right in the center. We're putting his nose right on that line in the center using our keyboard uh, up and down arrows, which help you nudge layers left or right or up or down. So if you have a layer selected and press the right key or left key, it moves it up or down, left, right. And you can also hold the shift key while pressing the left, right, up or down key to move it at a greater sort of distance. So just one nudge down versus shift nudge, which moves it even more. So now we know that our dude right here, our floating man is centered in our frame. And we can go back to view, we can turn off our rulers, or we could also turn off our guides, which um, are those rulers that we created. So we're gonna clear guides. Now this is looking pretty good, but it's not what this looks like. You can see that I have a little bit more contrast, the colors, the exposure of this this image is a little bit different than here, which is a little bit dull. And you can probably see, see here in the final project, I have this curves layer. So let's go ahead and at the very top, which we can do by selecting the top layer and then choosing this adjustment, new adjustment layer button, and then curves. Curves is a way of adjusting the exposure. Now, if you're a photographer, you've probably seen this RGB curve before, but basically it is this graph and on the right hand side are the highlights or the bright parts of your image. On the left hand side are the darks and you have this line that you can create points in and move up or down to adjust that exposure. So say I just put a point in the middle and drag up, it's going to make the exposure of everything brighter. See there? So only the darkest parts of the image are still visible because everything else is becoming completely overexposed. To create contrast, you create what's called a contrast curve. So what we do is we increase the brights and we decrease the darks just a little bit. You can kind of see how this starts to create sort of an S shaped look. So that adds contrast to our image. Another thing you'll see though in our project too is that our guy actually has like a similar color to the background. And that's just a filter that I've added to this, this guy. Now there's different ways to do this. And in the next sections, we're going to be looking deeper into editing images. One way is by adding a layer adjustment like this. Another is by just editing this specific layer itself, um, kind of burning in an edit. And we can do that by going up to image, adjustments, and you have all of these adjustments, but the one that I wanna use is called photo filter. And the reason I wanna do that is because we can click a specific color. So say we click this, this pink right here in the frame, and let's make it even more pink purple and we can increase this density. 
so that it's actually adding that filter, that color as sort of like a filter to our guy. Now I'm gonna just go a little bit stronger in color and pink. And that looks pretty good. But there's a ton of preset filters here. You have sort of different warming, cooling filters, and then specific colors as well. Now, if I click OK, what happens, whoops, let's go back to our pink, something like that. Drop our density, something like that. That adds this as a smart filter to this specific layer, okay? So this is also an update in Photoshop. Uh, what this used to do was actually burn in this edit to this, this photo and you couldn't undo it really, but now you can actually undo these layers because they are smart layers, which is pretty cool. So now we have a more cohesive image with our, our guy with the colors, super abstract as I mentioned, but I think pretty darn cool. And to, to know that you could create this, this early on in this course, I think is pretty darn awesome. So I think uh, big congrats to you, props for coming this far. To, to know that you could do this, this early on in this course, I think is pretty darn awesome. As I've mentioned, we're gonna dive deeper into a lot of these other things that I've done, like shapes and these filters, but that being said, I think uh, you should be proud of yourself where you've gotten so far and the skill set that you're building is increasingly becoming uh, bigger and you're going to be able to do more and more stuff in Photoshop. Uh, throughout.